So before I even tackle the beast of today's review, if you're a new viewer, skip to this point right here. See this time point? Skip to there. If you genuinely want to understand what's been going on, why I haven't posted in two months, listen to this little brief explanation and then enjoy the review. So a very fast synopsis of what's been going on with me is the combination of a few things. One, I thought I had more time with my grandfather and he was battling his own battle. I'm not going to say what it is. It's obviously personal. And unfortunately, he lost. So I had to deal with the grief of losing my grandfather. Secondly, when I was at the funeral of my grandfather, my nephew coughed in my face, which he then gave me a cold for basically two weeks. I couldn't smoke for two weeks. So after two weeks of being being healed, I kind of lost my taste of cigars in a sense. Coming back into smoking cigars, I just take the tobacco and just burn. I wasn't getting the flavors that I was typically getting. So I had to rebuild my palate to get used to daily smoking again. And then lastly, there's been living situations I'm currently going through that prevented me from recording in my studio. Now nah, I'm fine. Those are the three main reasons why I haven't uploaded. With that being said, today we have the dab it off Maduro 2024. This bad boy. Hmm. This little rich chocolate smell to the wrapper. Slightly oily. Looks a little bit oily too. Yeah, you could you could definitely see the little oily aspect. Let's see. My fingertips, eh, they're slightly at, no oily, but just playing with the cigar itself. Eh, not really much, but this is a very sweet undertone to it. Like rich chocolate. Mm. I mean, it looks like a Hershey bar with the coloration. I'm going to go cut it. I'm going to start giving you guys information and facts about the cigar. Mm. There's like a little honeyness to it. Ooh, that's sweet. Looks like a little licorice too. Kind of reminds me of like trail mix. You know, have the chocolate, the pretzel, you no know, saltiness a little bit. And it's not really salty, but it's just like it gives me the remnants of like a trail mix. So very interesting cold draw. So there's three variations of the cigar. You have the Toro, which is today's video. You have the Robusto, and you have the short Corona. The Toro, it is a 56 for the ring gauge and six inches for the length for the wrapper. You have an amazing Ecuadorian for the binder. You have an awesome Mexican binder and for the filler, you have the phenomenal Dominican, but people who are watching like Rick, don't they already have their own Maduro? Why the hell are they doing this? Yes, that would have released a Maduro line in 2008. It's been what? 16 years they wanted to redefine it they wanted to revamp it they wanted to put a new little twist to it on our bank account expenses uh this bad boy is 54 dollars just for one singular cigar 54 dollars kind of typical in a dab fashion to have a little bit overpriced cigar but maybe with the taste notes i get and the experience could possibly make it worth it the lie detector determined that was a lie oh! But before we ignite and just focus solely on just the review, what makes this cigar so special compared to the 2008 variation or that line? Because I think that's a regular production. Apparently, when it comes to the fact of the cigar, the wrapper, the Ecuadorian wrapper, to be more specific, is a Corta number no. seven. What that means is this is the highest grade of Davidoff's tobacco plants. Whatever they use as a grade point, Apparently, the wrapper that goes into the cigar is at the top of the food chain when it comes to tobacco grade or quality. 
But do a little more research. You figure out that not only that this is the top grade, but they fermented it for 16 months and then let it rest for two years. I'm guessing that's the difference of what they did with the standard Madura line that they released in 2008 compared to this one. And most likely the price change and the quality and all that kind of sorts. So I kind of get it. This is like going to the bar and asking for top shelf spirits into your cocktails. So I kind of get the price point of why it is 54. Unfortunately, it's not for your everyday consumption because $54 a day. And if you have a child. I don't think $54 a day is, is something everybody could afford unless, you know, you're Elon Musk with Tesla and X and Twitter, whatever the hell it's called nowadays. Anyways, that's all the information I have so far. The cigar I gave you the dimensions. I gave you the MSRP. I gave you the wrapper binder filler background of why it was created. Let me shut the hell up. Let's light up and let's enjoy the cigar. Look at that prettiness. Look at that prettiness. Interesting flavors. I'm gonna move my fan so you guys won't get blinded. It's a slight spice. Very nice, subtle spice. It hits you immediately and then just chills out at the very end. So it's just that immediately after you retro, there's a little spice kick. But it doesn't stay. It's very subtle. It's not when you eat like hot wings or whatever and it resides on your taste buds for a long while and it burns and you gotta drink milk and cheese. No, this is very subtle. It gives you a little oomph and then just... It's almost like a tidal wave. It looks ferocious at its peak, but once it crashes and it hits the beach, then the roaring sounds and it coming back into the water, it's peaceful. And that's what the spice levels remind me of. I'm getting that trail mix. We have this nuttiness, we have this chocolate. Almost like some fruitiness. The best explanation is a trail mix. This first third is just a straight trail mix with a little bit of spice. So just get yourself a bag of trail mix, take out all the pretzels, put a little bit of white pepper in it. That's this. That's what it is so far. Oh. For a second, I had a duration when there is no spice i'm like oh so maybe that was just the initial and it stopped no it came back there's a slight earthiness to it i may not be a big fan of davidoff's price points but one thing i can say is i'm in love with their craftsmanship Look at that beauty. Look at the ash. A pure white. That is pure white. That's probably one of the most whitest ash I have ever seen in a little while from reviews. Retros are very smooth. I see no flaws in the construction, no rips, no little nicks. The cap is still fine. Draw still nice. 
taste is so good. You have that dark chocolate that's coming in and out in between the whole spiciness, fruity, nuttiness to it. Those flavors are like basically dancing with each other. And that chocolate is being the forefront, background, middle ground, and it's just dancing with all of them. It's like a desperate man in the club trying to come home not alone. That's what the dark chocolate in a cigar is. It's a desperate man not wanting to go home by himself. So based on just what I'm getting from the first third, will I justify $54 yet? Not really, not yet. I feel like the flavors currently for the beginning, it's not like life changing. It's not amazing. It's great, but it's not something that it's already triggering like a impulse for me to get more. It has the qualifications of what I do like that chocolate, that sweetness. Those are definitely impulse notes that makes me want to get more of the cigars, but it's not hitting that mark yet. But one thing I can compliment is the retro now is getting a little bit more smoother. Before it was the more of a rougher edge. Now it's more rounded. That spice is now taking a little chill pill. I'm getting a little bit more of the actual flavors of what I explained in the beginning. Now those are like dominating. Now the spice is the audience member. One thing I forgot to mention is that when it comes to the intensity, when it comes to the strength of the cigar, it's supposed to be a medium. But Davidoff, they rated it at three out of five when it comes to strength. Just want to throw that information out there as well. With that being said, let me finish this last third. And let's go into the second third. This is where I'm at with the cigar. And guys, look at how basically almost perfect the burn has been. I'm starting to get overwhelming flavors of honey. Honey is by far one of my favorite condiments when it comes to chicken. And it may sound weird to you guys, but honestly, chicken with honey, it is an amazing duo. Entering the second, third, you have this very subtle cedarness that's hiding in the background. Honey, it's his main forefront. There has to be a little bit more to it. Give me one second. Oh, that is so delicious. Oh, this is nice. There's an ever super slight white spice in there. Ever so slight. It's not very much there yet. The beginning had a little bit more punch. The spice in the second third is extremely subtle. I'm not sure I'm going to tease this as the final third, but I'm getting very, very light spice more specifically white spice not ice spice not a munch but parts of me feel like i'm hitting the calm before the storm the very beginning was just the clouds forming and right now it's just raining let's see the last third is either a thunderstorm or maybe the cloud disperses and the rainbow comes out but for the meantime those are the notes i'm getting white spice honey and cedar as we enter the halfway mark of the cigar, it's reminding me of like a milk tea. What I mean by that, because with teas, typically people add honey as a way for a sweetener. There's this creaminess to it. More like a heavy cream element that's starting to take place in the background. The honey is definitely is dominating, but this is sweetness that comes out at the very ending of retros. Before I cut to the last third, this is a question for my well-seasoned cigar enjoyers. If you had to build your own cigar, meaning wrapper, binder, and filler, what will you use? I will not give you any limitation. If you want to use three fillers, a double binder, barber pole when it comes to the wrapper, be creative in the comment section. I want to see what you guys create. 
I'm at the point where I got to remove the ban. Let's see what happens. Hopefully nothing is destroyed. That's the only thing that happened. That is the only thing that happened. Other than that, it's stuck together. And it's very oily. As you can see, it's leaving. It looks like a resin. My fingertips. And the smoke output. Look at that smoke output. Oh. <laughs> last third hit. Ooh, wee. Well, I'm fishing at the last third. An earth note is starting to come out more. With way more spice. That creamy sweetness is still there. This is a good cigar. I'm actually enjoying this. But is it still worth $54? I'm going to say no. I wouldn't mind paying at least $35 for this cigar. I understand that of how this costs and they're a very elegant luxury brand with every release they're getting pricier and pricier i understand inflation is a thing and all that kind of sorts but we're still consumers yes i'm a reviewer yes i take these hits for you guys so i could try it out for you guys buy it we're entering this stage of these cigars especially with the whole year of the dragon craze every single year of the dragon other than the punch has been $25 plus. I'm definitely in love with the smoke output. The taste notes are fine. This is like a very desserty cigar. It's not overbearing. It's not harsh. I could definitely say they definitely refined their Maduro. But is it box worthy? I don't know. I think singles of these are a little bit more better because a box of these comes with 20. Meaning if you want a box of these cigars, you're looking at a thousand eighty bucks. A thousand eighty bucks for a box of these. I'm fine with this being a event cigar for you to have and enjoy once in the blue moon. The most I would personally do would maybe be a five pack, but for a whole box. I don't think so. The element, the nuttiness came back and I feel stuffy because with the retros now, it's a little spice punch to it, which is like messing with my nasal capacity canal, whatever that is. But I think I'm ready to cast my judgment. There's still quite a bit of cigar left. I'm already at the last third. I already have all the taste notes of the last third. I don't think it's going to change anymore, but I'm going to cast my judgment. With appearance, with this very deep chocolate wrapper, with the band combination, with this golden band same Maduro, with your standard Davidoff band, the appearance is a solid eight. I love the gold and black combination when it comes to the Maduro band. I think it complements the cigar very well, but I'm gonna give the appearance and presentation an eight. I see how the box looks like on their Instagram post. I see how they market it. It is gorgeous. Their marketing is amazing when it comes to their Instagram posts and their website. So I'm going to give it a solid eight when it comes to appearance and profile. When it comes to construction, as you saw, very oily, pure white ash. You have the whole component of the draw being very slightly tight which I do like. I don't like a very loose cigar. It's, it feels like a straw. There's a very small resistance to it. Smoke output is immense. So when it comes to construction, I'm gonna give it an eight as well. Lastly, for the taste, just one last reminder. The first third 
had that trail mix combination without the pretzels, that deep chocolate of the fruits, the nuttiness. All that was pleasant with a very slight ice to it. That was great. Then it transitioned into the honey oaky sweetness, which was very pleasant. And then the final conclusion ends with a lot of more spice, this earthiness to it, with a reappearance of that fruitiness. It's not bad. But I felt like this cigar could have had a little bit more intensity with those flavor notes. And yes, that dark chocolate did kind of dance around with the other notes in the beginning. But it wasn't a very overpowering chocolate that I tend to like. It wasn't that typical deep chocolate that I tend to like in cigars. The sweetness was nice. I felt like more could have been done, especially for the price point of fifty-four dollars. I feel like the taste notes could have took you on a more of a ride. Yeah, I'm not too much of a big fan of the last third. I'm more of a fan of the second third. The first was decent. The second was a little bit more great for me. Last third is a little bit more all right. But that's just my opinion. So with that, I'll give the taste note maybe a seven. I'll say seven. I don't truly believe it is worth $54. If you do see it, try it. Form your own opinion on it. But again, for $54, I kind of expect a little bit more from Davidoff. It's not bad, but compared to the late hour, you save a lot more money and get a little bit more taste. That's just my opinion on the cigar. I feel like the late hour is by far one of the most superior lines on Davidoff's roster. But with that 7.5 rating, still determines this cigar is a Nash. Hope you guys enjoyed today's review of the Davidoff Maduro 2024. Until next time, guys, as always, I love your faces, and I'm out. Peace.